What's up, everybody? Today we're having a Royal Rumble. Oh, what a we're gonna determine which of these softwares right here are the very best for producing quality, smooth, high ISO images in high resolution cameras like the Z9 that we're gonna to use today. Let's go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with JPEG in camera noise reduction, and then we're gonna start comparing all the other ones to it. And the one that succeeds moves on, the one that is not as good falls off to the wayside. Finally, we get to the very end and we'll declare a winner of our Royal Rumble for high ISO images in very high resolution cameras. Now here's the rules. The only edits I did on these besides the noise reduction was that uh, I tried to make the exposure levels approximately the same so it wouldn't look you wouldn't be distracted by that when I show the images. If the software, if the software was automated, I use the automation and I just let it decide what was the best. If there was a choice between different models in the software, like some of them say high and medium and low, um, I compared them and I picked the one that I personally thought looked best. And finally, if the software required you to move sliders around, it wasn't fully automated, then I did the best I could. I spent some time to get them to look as best as I thought I could get it in that particular piece of software. Now, the reason I'm focusing on high resolution, high megapixel cameras is because frankly, people who have those, including folks who have DX or crop frame cameras, uh, tend to have issues in high ISO situations with a lot of noise. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics and the scientifics of that. The Angry Photographer already produced a pretty good uh, video. It explains it very well. I'll link that below. Check that out uh, uh, after you watch this video. So with all that said, let's get started on the first image. This is a JPEG shot uh, basically straight out of camera. Um, I brought up the, the light levels just a little bit. And other than that, it did its own noise reduction in the camera itself. So the first thing I do whenever I look at an image is I zoom straight into the subject's face because I want to see how sharp it is. So hopefully you're looking at this on a larger screen so you can see what I'm talking about, but let's go through it. So the first thing I notice is it's pretty good. The eyes are nice and bright. You can see the whites in the eyes and that's important. I'm going to bring that up later on with other pieces of software that don't do such a good job. But it has kind of a painting effect to it. If you look, it, nothing is, the details are not real sharp anywhere. Uh, there may be in a few spots right here. Um, it did clean up the noise. I mean, there's no color, the color spectrals you normally see with these types of things, but um, it gives kind of a painting effect, which is very common with a lot of noise reduction at really high levels. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Some people call it a plasticky. I don't know if this looks plasticky, but it definitely looks like it's a painting of some sort. So here we go, JPEG in camera noise reduction. Let's just keep that in mind how we do this. Now I'll tell you before I go on, a lot of people advocate for JPEG in camera noise reduction only because it's quick and simple. And if you are on a tight deadline, you're in the media and you need to crank out photos as quickly as possible, this is good enough. Now we're gonna compare it to a software called NX Studio. NX Studio is the, uh, the software that Nikon puts, puts out. It allows you to edit raw images. It basically emulates what your camera would do. So right now, the NX Studio is on the right and, and we'll put the in-camera noise reduction on the left. And what you will find is there is very little difference between those two. If, if anything, I would say the NX Studio on the right is not as good as the in-camera noise reduction on the left. NX Studio doesn't even have a slider. It just says high, normal, and low. Uh, this was set on high. I did try it on normal, and it didn't look as good. This is actually the better of the two. So as of right now, in-camera noise reduction, even better than Nikon's own uh, raw editor. So what, that one goes down, it's out. Okay, next, we're gonna call up the old Lightroom Plastic. Now, if you're like me and you use Adobe products, Lightroom is a very commonly used throughout most of photography world. I know some people use some other stuff like Anwan and Capture One, but Lightroom is pretty much the standard for most people. Here's a classic example of why there are so many products out on the market to deal with noise. Image on the left, in-camera noise reduction, image on the right, a raw photo that I did my darndest, and I've been using Lightroom a long time. 
did my darndest to make as good as possible using Lightroom's built-in noise reduction. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there who are gonna say, oh, I could do better in Lightroom. Okay, great, good for you. But I'm telling you, it took me a while to get to this level, ISO 16000 with the Z9. And if it takes a lot of effort just to get to this level, that's probably not a good thing. I gotta tell you, there was a time when I talked about shooting JPEG in camera noise reduction as a standard. That's because of this real problem that you see right here. And again, like I say, this is why we have a lot of software out there, noise reduction software, as a plug-in for Lightroom. Enough said, uh, I don't think this is good. Uh, the, you can already, if we go over to here, and I'll blow it up a little bit, uh, it's grainier. This is the best I could do with the grain without it getting really mushy. Um, the eyes, you could tell they're starting to go a little of the tan color, the skin color starting to bleed into the eyes. So this is why I do not use Lightroom for uh, noise reduction at these kind of levels. Lower levels, like 3,000, 3,200 and below, it's fine. But at this level, no, no good. So Lightroom's out. Let's go on to the next one. Now, we're gonna talk about Photo AI from Topaz. This is a relatively new product that they put out. I suspect Photo AI eventually will, that Topaz is gonna to try to make this some sort of all-encompassing, all, you know, editing software where, where it has all their stuff. They're sharp and they're denoise and even editing features built into it. It's not there yet. And I will tell you, I, I downloaded the very latest version before I pulled this up. In fact, as of last night as I make this video. So let's see how it handled the noise reduction in this photo. Okay, so this is interesting. Look at the eyes on the photo on the right. That is the Topaz Photo AI. And you look how nice and bright and white the eyes are, the blue in his eyes. It looks phenomenal. It is, it is much better than the JPEG noise reduction. But, and here are some big buts. It doesn't get the face mask. The, everything below around the eyes is way out of focus. You'll see on the side of the helmet, there's some weird stippling pattern. As you go down to the uniform and his skin, all this weird stippling going on in here. So I cannot recommend Photo AI right now from Tobaz. Maybe, you know, six months from now when they've got it really dialed in, but I, like I say, I just let this go totally automated. It did its own thing. And while the eyes are beautiful, the rest of it is not good at all. So again, photo AI, boom, air out the door. So now we're gonna go to Luminar Noiseless. I did a video on Luminar from Skylum a few weeks ago. And one of the features they had was that I was kind of excited about was how good their noise reduction was in their new software from Skylum. This is Luminar Neo with the uh, Noises AI plugin. Now, neither one of them are super like tack sharp and the one on the right is a little grainier, but the skin tones are nicer. It doesn't have as much of that kind of painting look to it. And the eyes are nice and clean. It definitely took care of the noise reduction. It doesn't have the weird stippling that the uh, Topaz Photo AI had, so. Uh, right now, I think it's better than the, the JPEG in-camera noise reduction. So uh, for the moment, I'm gonna, uh, JPEG in-camera noise reduction goes out the window and now Luminar with this Noises AI is in the lead. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now the next one I'm gonna do is On One Photo Raw 2023. This is one of those where it's, and it's an all-encompassing package. It, you can use it to edit the photos in addition to just doing noise reduction. Uh, same thing, I just tried to get the light levels approximately the same, and these are the results I got. Okay, so on one, on the right. Although it did some sharpening in the image compared to the, uh, the JPEG, or I'm sorry, for the Luminar Skylum's Luminar Neo here. It's got a very weird stippling pattern here on the face and on the, the uniform and on the skin and everything like that. Although it is certainly sharper than the, the uh, Luminar Neo, it is, I wouldn't use this. This is very odd patterns here and it's, although it's nice and sh it is sharper, I'll say that it is, I, I wouldn't use this. I wouldn't use this at all. So I think I'm gonna stick with Luminar Noiseless AI for the moment, and on one is psh, out the door.
moving on, we're going to do Capture One. Now, Capture One is one of, another one of those all-encompassing software packages. I've had people tell me it's super awesome for noise reduction. We'll see. Now, I know that Capture One is not my standard software, and I'm not as experienced with it. However, it shouldn't be difficult to move some sliders around and get the best quality possible. So, with that said, on the left, Luminar. On the right, uh, Capture One. And the Capture One, I'm gonna say this, it is sharper, and it definitely cleaned up the noise. I will say it is a lot grainier looking than the Luminar from Skylum. And although it does bring in the eyes real well, they're blue and they're, the, the whites of the eyes look good, it is a lot grainier. So, I mean, you could make this, this is kind of a toss up. They both have features in one way or the other. I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drop the Luminar for now, go with the Capture One. It's being slightly better only because it's producing a sharper looking image. But not because but it is much grainier looking, and I'm not I'm not crazy about that. That's personal opinion. So I'm gonna drop that. We're gonna go now. Capture one has moved to the top of the pile. Let's see if it stays there. All right. Uh, topaz denoise. It's been a lot about topaz denoise these days, and I would tell you, I do use it regularly. I'm going to put the current item on the left and Topaz Denoise on the right. And let's compare those two. So once again, capture one on the left, Topaz Denoise on the right. So here's what I see. Topaz Denoise, much cleaner looking image, much smoother looking grain patterns, much sharper looking image from the capture one. But the face has kind of that, that smearing painting look to it. The whites of the eyes are taking on a tan color. We've lost the blue in his eyes. So that's a bummer. Now, if you zoom this out a ways, it would look so much better because you can really get to the eyes. But since we're going for, you know, best quality possible, wow, this is, this is a tough one. I mean, it has got so much nicer green pattern throughout. And uh, just so you know, if you're a denoise user, I tried different modes. This one's in low light. I tried it in their other modes. This is the one that looked best on this particular image. I'm a little bummed about the eyes. However, because the grain is so much smoother on the denoise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that one to the top right now. All right, now we're moving on to DXO Pure Raw 2 is the last one. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of held what I perceive is the better of this group toward the end. So this one has two options, you prime and deep prime. Deep prime was recommended for this particular photo, so that's what I ran it at. Let's bring it in. So DxO on the right with using their deep prime mode, Topaz Denoise on the left using their, um, their low light mode. And I will tell you, I've been a, a long time Topaz Denoise user, but the Deep Prime is really, really good too. It's different. I, it, it did the image in a different way. It handled a little bit, a little bit differently, but it did also did an excellent job on it. What I love is that the Deep Prime retained the blue in his eyes. It, it does have some of that painting look to his face, but it's not bad. It is not quite as sharp looking as the Topaz Denoise, but I think Overall, man, I mean, be between these two, you really can't go wrong. The Topaz has slightly better, has a little bit better smoothness in the grain as opposed to the Deep Prime. But the Deep Prime did an excellent job there too. The colors are really nice in the Deep Prime. You know, I'm still kind of gravitating toward the, the Topaz because of the way it looks, but the fact that the Deep Prime kept the blue in the eyes, I'm really impressed by that. I really like that. So what's the overall winner here? Is it the Topaz Denoise or Deep Prime? Heck, I don't know. I mean, I could go either way on these things for different reasons. I will tell you that I use Topaz Denoise quite a bit, um, not as much as the, Deep, the, the DxO product over here, but I tell you, either one would probably work for you. Now both of these are plugins, or they can, you can run them standalone, you can write them as a batch, 
or they could be pulled out of, you could have your Lightroom or Capture One or On One actually go to them, pull them up and use them as a plugin, which is great. You know, both these softwares are fairly quick when they process the photo, you know, 10 seconds, somewhere around in there uh, to do it. Uh, I tend to run in batches, so I'll just put a bunch through at the same time. But either way, I'm pretty impressed with both of these. And you could argue one way or the another which one you prefer. So if you think my study here is flawed and you have a different way of doing it, put it in the comments below. I'm curious about that. But I will tell you from now, I, I gave up advocating for JPEG with in-camera noise reduction a long time ago, even though I used to do that quite a bit. I think the new software out there is very capable. These are just two prime examples of that. And uh, I would use either one of them.